another fun banter between Roland and Lachlan. Yeah. And I was like, dudes, just kiss already. Please satisfy me. Um, duck, please. Welcome to my Dragon Age Absolution review and lore observations for episode 5, An Altar of Fire. So this episode really shows us how obsessed Razarin is with fixing things, because fixing the past in a problematic way uh, works for every problematic mage. I will make us a family again. We learn that Hero is to Vinter's like, Ooh, tum tum tum. And Hero's family tried to help slaves and was killed by Venatori. So we're learning more of Hero's motivations. But you're to Venter. There are some nice interactions between Hero and Tasia and Hero and Razarin. But I do have you. Which really give us some nice clues about what's to come. I'm not a violent man, but I must warn you. The next few hours of your life are going to be challenging. Tasia reveals something really interesting regarding the Venatori. Some Vints are trying to change to free Tevinter from Venatori influence. Not everyone welcomes the Venatori. In fact, some of us are working hard to free the Imperium from their influence. This reveals the Venatori are not just remnants of followers of Corypheus. They are a much larger faction, spreading their spiel far and wide into Vinter and gaining more and more followers. In Vinter Nights, the Venatori tried to free a demon, probably the formless one, from beneath Minrathis. Now they are converting Vince left and right. That gives us a nice clue of what happened with the Venatori, how far spread they are, how big of a faction they truly are. And in Dragon Age Dreadwolf, we could find allies who are against the Venatori, but the Venatori do pose a threat in Vinter. The giant gates to the city, that's what was in the trailer. Not Karinus. The giant gates are really interesting. Bring our sister and the circulum to me. And Neb. More of the sinister streak of Razar and seeing him fall more and more. Only if she doesn't cooperate. It's the circulum. It's changed him somehow. Would have been interesting to see more development in that regards, to see Razarin more influence. Maybe the circulum glows a bit and that glow reaches his mind, a glint from the circulum to his eyes to see that it's influencing him. Something to depict that more clearly. It's not the artifact that's dangerous. It's whoever else wants it. I won't let anyone take the circulum from me. Uh, because he does go kind of abruptly, so maybe a couple more episodes could have been in play. It influences its wielder would make sense, like other certain objects could influence their wielders. But I suspect it's not just because of the circulum, you know, there are other factors in play. <laughs> You really had me going for a minute. In the trailer, we saw Neb as the slow motion Vin. That's the other thing. The armor I had observed was like Venatori armor. Venatori armor is similar to ancient Tevinter armor, so it would make sense if the Venatori have more influence that Tevinter armor and Venatori armor are very similar nowadays also. For a time, they were less. Now, it's more like the concept art. Throw down your weapon and give me some answers. Lachlan. Tasia wants to know what makes the Circulum so dangerous for Tevinter, depending who else possesses it. What does the Circulum do that makes it such a threat to Tevinter? Uh, yeah, that's why it's dangerous. I felt very touched and heartbroken. I too thought Neb was reaching towards Miriam's cheek, the control in him, and I was like, oh no, I, I got teary-eyed. <laughs> That's my little capsule for episode five of Dragon Age Absolution. I have one for each episode. And like this video if you like it, subscribe to BGM Approved, and I'll see you all soon. Maseranas.